Welcome to the latest episode of the Property Lifestyle Mastery podcast powered by the Property Strategy Team. And on the episode today, we are joined by Dom and Dave to talk about the simpler way to solve problems. Now, it's actually, I'm afraid to say, it's also the scary way, but it's actually a much easier way in order to navigate your way through your business progress. And it might not sound that sex, sound that sexy, but it really is. It is about self-awareness. Uh, and what is self-awareness and how does that actually really contribute to your success? Now, if you just said this to me a few years ago, do you are gonna be on a podcast? Are you guys are talking about self-awareness? I would have thought I was really boring, but actually I think we're really cool. Uh, and this is such a powerful, Uh, tool and technique that can completely transform not only your life but also your business too and enable you to have much more mental clarity and emotional control to be able to make more informed decisions that will really power your business to the next level but also your life as well. So uh, you're really going to enjoy this episode. So let me hand over to the awesome Dom and Dave. All right. Hello, Dom. Hello, Dave. Great to be back with you. Always love yeah. our conversations. <laughs> All right. Here we are today. We're going to be talking about self-awareness, um, which is actually in, in our kind of model, property lifestyle mastery model. We, we have this as the first most important aspect of the mindset mastery, which actually was the last episode you and I recorded, Dom, was the mindset mastery. So we're now just going straight into the deep dive on, on how, how you get that mindset mastery. Yeah. And in essence, this uh, it's, it's, it's step number one towards mindset mastery, but it's actually, I think, step number one towards like self-mastery in every way. And therefore, step number one towards mastery of everything in your in your world yeah. it's it's really incredible the power of this so yeah I, I think let's just um fire off um why don't you just kind of give us your ideas Dom, about like what is this what what does it mean to be have self-awareness to become yes. self-aware absolutely and you know what uh, i remember reading a, an article uh that they did a study and they said you know who thinks they're self-aware and it's something like 95 percent of people thought they were pretty self-aware but the reality mm. of it was that actually through studies they showed that actually more like 10 or 15 percent are really actually self-aware so when i read that i was like so what what is self-awareness then and it literally popped into my head pop uh, what popped in was that self-awareness is the ability to observe your thoughts and feelings rather than to be them and be in them and and think that they are you. You know, your thoughts are not you. Your thoughts are a product of your brain. Your brain is an organ in your body. It has a function. It analyzes and makes sense of things. That's its role. But when you're fast asleep and not even dreaming, you're not, yeah, it's not you're not you're not self-aware at that point right (laughs) it's the ability to observe yourself that's what i think is a a really good definition and very so can get out of that uh you know constant analysis and thinking that's so true i you know i'm going to take it one step further from what you've just said because you've obviously focused in on the on the thoughts Mm -hmm. thoughts are are the main thing that we think about Mm. (laughs) that's the thing that's going on up there right but i think there's so much that goes on underneath the thoughts that we aren't like conscious of at all and, and in essence you head into the subconscious there uh, and again I've, I've read several things going back to what you know studies and stuff you know some people say 90 or 95 percent of our programming of our kind of life is is uh, all subconscious programming and only five to ten percent is is your conscious thought but actually there's been studies done on that people have kind of looked into it and found that actually when they started reanalyzing it it was even far less than five percent possibly less than one percent was truly conscious action so if you're starting to talk about self-awareness in that respect Mm. it's not even the thoughts that you need to be aware of it's it's everything that you're doing and everything you're feeling everything the emotion you have and being aware of where it's come from and and that that's before all of that i mean what we feel what we think what we uh emote our state of being, they all are what heads towards what we do in life, what actions we choose to take, what reactions we have to the world around us. So if in order to really make sense of why we're acting in a certain way and therefore why we're getting certain results in our life, why because results are literally a uh, an end result of our action. There is a direct correlation between 
um, your results and your actions and how you are, your state of being versus what happens to you. Uh, and so if you really want to make sense of why certain things are happening to you and why your life is how it is, step number one, become self-aware of mm. everything because it's all it's all under there making you do things, right? Absolutely. <laughs> it, it, yeah, yeah, you're completely right, uh, Dave, uh, of course, because <laughs> of, of all the fascinating studies. But um why is it so important, though, that people do become self-aware? Because there are plenty of people who are very successful, certainly on the surface, lots of money, big house, job they love, mm. those sorts of things. But why is it? Yeah. Why is self-awareness important? What I've noticed is um, obviously you're talking about success. Mm. Outward success there. You've immediately identified what everyone considers to be success. Right. But we all know that there are it's it's common knowledge that so many people who are outwardly successful are not necessarily inwardly happy, mm. are not necessarily enjoying life or having the life that they really wanted. There's there's just a classic stereotype of the successful individual is someone who deep down when you when you get the, the personal life of that home actually it's it's not how it all looks on the outside mm -hmm. uh, and, and actually that those trappings of success the materialisms of what we consider society considers success uh, are what everyone focuses in on yes it's like a, a cultural driven uh, methodology towards what you are you've appropriated this concept of success mm -hmm. from the culture from watching tv from what people say from your material desires and and therefore you you ignore everything else around it and and going back to your what you've questioned here uh why is it important self-awareness and what, what i've seen over and over again in, in in ourselves um in particularly when i get really close and get to get into good detail with our clients and the choices people make is that unless you are self-aware you are literally ruled by your subconscious self and you don't realize it and you constantly make decisions that do not necessarily lead you to the goals you want mm. and definitely don't lead you towards happiness. Mm. I mean, 100% don't lead you towards happiness. And we all really, you know, we'll, we'll be trying to achieve with anything. We're trying to get to some sort of enjoyment, happiness, fulfillment. These, these are the things we want in life. But everyone's making decisions without realizing it because they're not self-aware enough to realize that something else is controlling them. Right. And so why is it important? Because otherwise... You're not actually going to get the thing you want, which is yes. the bigger picture, not just this this obsession with the yeah. uh, focus on materialism and what other people think of success. Right. Yeah. That makes me think also that self-awareness is important because we're not always aware of what's holding us back. So mm -hmm. we think we want X outcome, X amount of, you know, money coming in each month or this sort of house and this or this sort of relationship that sort of travel you know whatever it might be we think we want those things and yet it still consistently evades us and so self-awareness would help to make you aware of possibly as you mentioned the subconscious self-sabotaging the subconscious trauma that we often hold somewhere in our bodies that has manifested and resulted because of a, an event in our past whether it's something in childhood or something to do with our pets or relationship with our parents whatever it might be and 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 therefore being willing to go to those possibly uncomfortable places to address those yes in order for us to help us move forward in in today you know in, in what we're doing today so often i've seen people and they're doing all the right things and yet they're not getting the results and it's only when we address the completely random issue that they have with their relationship with their parents, for example, that they have a breakthrough there that suddenly means that they they catapult off and, and are able to you know raise that finance, get that next deal. And it just happens with mm. so much more ease, even though what's that relationship got to do with business? Nothing at all. And yet somehow subconsciously it does. And that's where I think also self-awareness is absolutely essential to go. You know what? It might not be relevant. It might not be related, but it might. And so we need to explore all areas of the person because we are holistic beings and how we show up in business is influenced by obviously what we're doing, but also who we're being and our past traumas that might yeah. be held in our bodies. So, and I, 
I think you've said something there um, that, that you've really kind of keyed into the main problem here is uh, the word self-sabotage. Mm. And self-awareness is the answer to self-sabotage. It's the cure. And I think I use this word a lot nowadays. I didn't used to use it at all. I didn't even think I was self-sabotaging. I didn't understand this concept, right? What, what is self-sabotage? I don't self-sabotage. Of course I don't. I'm, you know, I'm really a analytical, rational. I, you know, I, I'm just going down the route that life prescribes um, with good reason thinking. That's how I used to think. And what I was so unaware of what I've now becoming more and more aware of every single day, or see it more and more, is the concept of self-sabotage. It's not it's not a weird thing. It's not like it feels like you're self-flagellating in some way, you know, like you're doing it on purpose to yourself. It's, it's not that. Self-sabotage is just very simple. It's scientifically, it's a scientific fact that we are, you know, automated programs in essence. Right. The, whole, the concept of the subconscious is that it's an automated program because the body cannot operate and the personality cannot operate unless it has an automated programming because we can't make conscious decisions for absolutely everything and uh, even on just a simple fundamental survival level we have to the body has to have a, a survival instinct built into it so that everything that happens to our life there is a subconscious automated program that kicks in to the world around us to say how how, how can you survive and not and not die in this scenario right, right. so we are driven by this and in theory driven by the the fear the body's fear based response system now that in, infiltrates everything like our entire when you the whole reason for psychotherapy and people having these chats is because really when you start breaking it down looking why did you do that why are you feeling that why are you thinking that and you start going into where it came from there's always a historical trauma there's always something in your past you can get to and the psychotherapist route is to try and get you there to kind of find it almost mm. but it's just the knowledge of knowing that you are being driven by these these subconscious fear-based programs, right? And when self-sabotage is just allowing those automated programs to dictate your um, actions. Right. As long as you allow them to dictate your, your automated habitual programming is dictating your actions, you are self-sabotaging mm. because not going to be coming from the right place because uh, uh, from the very fundamental level it's coming from fear and right. fear is never going to be a good driver for positive results yes yes and that fear, part of the brain the amygdala the the mammalian reptilian brain that keeps us safe but it is often overly used and overly uh, stimulated in today's yeah. society particularly with listening to news and other things that could be a, a yeah. risk to our survival okay so we've dealt with what self-awareness yes. is and we've looked at why it's important uh, and looked at some of the aspects of it how does someone become more self-aware how do you go about becoming more self-aware well i found it interesting when you started this episode today you talked about the definition of it being becoming aware of your thoughts realizing that you are not your thoughts this is has been a real key for me uh, and actually, that's, that kind of uh, highlights the synchronicity between what we're talking about today and what has been the very fundamental basis of quite a lot of uh, Zen or kind of almost religious Buddhist Hindu uh, methodologies of how they actually reach their stage of enlightenment, right? Uh, if you think about a Buddhist monk, the main thing you think about is the fact that they meditate a lot. And they're masters of meditation. And one of the key things, if you start reading into it, that master meditators are doing, particularly that school of, you know, Buddhism, Zen Buddhism, what they're doing is becoming masters of watching their thoughts. Yes. And yes. That, that is all to, that's like it. That's the key fundamental. If you can separate yourself from your thoughts, yes. you suddenly empower yourself massively and these these this is why these monks um can achieve such incredible things i think i watched a documentary called the happiest man alive or something and it was basically a monk who was able to meditate on the emotion of happiness so well that he's his brain read way off the scale in every area when it came to what they consider scientifically to be happiness levels and it was just way beyond what any other human being could have because that's he focused all his attention on happiness and it was just that's what he could do. And it was it, like, why don't we all do that? <laughs> we all want to be happy, right? But yeah, so I think step number one, one option of the how-to is meditation. Yes. I think that's a very powerful route and has been for thousands of years. Yeah. Um, pro a proven methodology to becoming self-aware. 
Yeah. And, and pretty much everyone's heard of meditation. There's also prayer and mindfulness, which are effectively yeah. different versions of that. So, yeah. and that makes me think that there are so many different versions of meditation uh, and people practice all sorts of things, whether it's walking meditation, whether it's lying down, whether it's sitting up, is it, you know, uh, all, all the different names that I've forgotten, but what do you personally do? Because like you and I are quite different. I know, uh, yeah. you know effectively we have different ways of, of meditating effectively so what works for you great question um i'm gonna just before i answer what i actually do i want to just talk a little bit about kind of why i do it just so then i get to so i'll get yeah. to what i do um because i think there's different types of self-awareness you know you've got to become aware of your thoughts mm -hmm. um that's step number one but i think you've also got to start to become aware of your subconscious programming in some way yes um in order to become aware of your subconscious programming the key indicator of your programming is usually your emotions mm -hmm. because they're, they're the guidance system of your subconscious programming that's the the reaction inside to anything in the world particularly if it's you know uh telling your body telling you to do something is a strong emotion followed by a rationalized response from the brain to say why have i had that emotion so try, becoming self-aware of your emotions and then lastly for me it's like not just the emotion itself but in theory, the emotion is a conglomerate of multiple uh, physiological symptoms. Yeah. So every, if you think about any emotion you ever have, you can actually break it down into symptoms that are physiological, a feeling of prickling skin or suddenly sweating palms or butterflies in the stomach. Uh, all of these are just literally symptoms of the, of the physiology of the, of the body uh, that add together that you then interpret as an emotion. Right. So, for me, the, the meditation part is, is actually a process of kind of how can I sit down and first of all, listen to the body. I literally become in tune into the body because I know that the body is the first thing to react that is then going to cause my brain to start thinking. So I'd rather cut out the brain part because if you were happy all the time, you wouldn't have negative thoughts, for example. Um, and so you'd probably make different decisions than if you had fearful thoughts. So my my, my First thought is, right, how can I improve the body, get it onto a nice level playing field so that I feel good inside? Because yes. then the thoughts will follow. Um, so, yeah, I focus in on becoming self-aware of the body. I'll, I'll sit down. I'll just spend some time literally scanning my body. I've, I've, I've read lots of books to kind of come up with so many different techniques. So it's kind of impossible to cover it all. But this concept of scanning the body, of in, kind of focusing in on different parts of the body in order to create certain feelings you're in learning i would call it the power the mm. power to actually mentally change how you feel because that's another thing right mm. we we're driven by our emotions which means we're driven by the feelings in our bodies if you're feeling fear then you have certain fear feelings if you can control those feelings the, the, how the body is reacting then you can remove the fear so practicing changing the body the physiologic physiology of what's happening in the body is part of my meditation practice right so then uh becoming focused and aware of those things uh, again just sitting um allowing the brain to uh become a void you know to to, to uh, watch thoughts pass right is, is part of that process as well just to kind of get into a zone um I just, there's so many different things i do and and part of it is an intuitive process of sitting down and saying become aware of the body yes. what do i think i need today like what what did my body feel like it needs today and then just just picking out what i've read various different concepts that i've read and just doing things yeah and there's two important things that stand out for me there one is uh, obviously you are you know quite advanced and so if someone is starting off <clears throat> yeah yes. just follow a process you know get some guided yes. meditation just to get into the zone and understand a bit about it and a bit about how how you can do it once you're a more advanced bit like you yeah you, there's so many different ways so experiment on yourself all the different types of meditation mm. and maybe even breathing techniques to help quieten the mind and get that the brain waves from a beta brainwave frequency which is thinking into the delta the theta and, and other brainwave frequencies when you're being completely present you're not thinking you're not analyzing but you're in a you know a very blissful state um so meditation is one big one uh, I don't do all that much meditation, but I do always aim to be very present in everything I do. This is why I often forget stuff and I'm just in the zone or just, just being present. Um, and I find it by...
by training myself to do that regularly and, and bringing myself back to do it tomorrow. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm just here now. So that's the way I do it is, is kind of is along the lines of Michael Neal and Jamie Smart and other people who taught and teach the three P's it's known as. Um, so just practice being present the whole time. And then you don't have to meditate, mm. you're just present. Um, yeah. Other ways, kind of a bit more obvious that spring to mind are surround yourself with other people who are you know brilliant at this because they will help you and give you perspective because this is what meditation does right it gives you perspective <laughs> it, it, you're observing yourself and your thoughts and your feelings from a different position if you surround yeah. yourself with other people mentors coaches mastermind groups that can give you a different perspective on your life on who you are and what you're doing that will make you more self-aware as well um, so that's another thought is, is yeah, being part of an organization, a training program or, or mentorship that's going to help you with that. Um, any other thoughts on, on how people can become more self-aware? You've, you've, I love the fact that you've just dived straight into the, the concepts that the beta brainwave, the scientific concepts of why it happens. Uh, I, from my perspective, I had a huge shift when, when actually you, Dom, gave me uh, one of Joe Dispenza's books. Um, because I think Joe Dispenza, if anyone's interested in understanding the science behind meditation, understanding literally experiments that have been done on what meditation can do to you physiologically, how you can change your body with meditation. Joe is so good. He's a real, like he's a, a guru of mine. Uh, not that I've ever met him or been to any of his stuff. I've just read all of his books and I, I really respect everything he's done yes. because he just... Uh, he, he makes it so real for what I call the Western mind. In the Western mind, we kind of follow the scientific approach to life and he's made it accessible. So I, I would suggest anyone who's interested in this to, to consider digging out yeah. the Spencer. I think you're right. I've noticed um, you talk about having a, a, community, a group of people and a mentor in particular. I think the thing about a mentor that's, that's fascinating is that generally when you choose to have a mentor, you are choosing to humble yourself mm. to someone else's superior knowledge. The problem with self-awareness is that it requires a sense of humbleness because it requires you to accept that you do not know it all. It requires you to accept that you, uh, you know, you're not aware of what's going on inside, that you need to explore, that, that you don't know what you don't know. Yes. And the opposite of that is ego. And if you have too strong an ego and you're too, like, believe belief that you, you've got it all sorted you know what you're doing then you you've got you're, you're not going to be able to get past some barriers mm. to becoming self-aware you're going to keep hitting blockages and you're not going, to, not going to see the true perspective which is why having a mentor regardless you've gone through an initial process of, of going to someone and saying i believe you know more than me i believe enough to pay you some money to guide me and therefore i'm going to listen to you and and that person gives what you called the most important thing, the external perspective, yes. and is able to look at you through outside eyes and give you a new perspective on yourself. And it's so important. And it's just so important to, to how being able to find this self-awareness thing. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It makes me think of the, the things that I had this morning, that, it, that there are effectively four things that hold us back. Accepting our own limitations. So mm -hmm. yeah, asking for a mentor and going, you know what, I don't know everything. I'm willing to listen and, and learn. And to, yeah, lack of information, not knowing that there is a, a solution to your problem. Um, often there's a communication error um, as well that, that, you know, just haven't communicated effectively what the problem is. And sometimes a really interesting and deep one is actually there's a secondary gain that people have for, for staying stuck. You know, uh, whether they're, I don't know, morbidly obese or something like that. It's like, I won't attract another partner, which will break my heart, for example. You know, th there is a gain in staying where you're at. And so it's uh, interesting and, and important to kind of look at that and go, am I actually benefiting? And do I secretly, subconsciously want to stay here? So, mm. um, yeah, having other people, as you say, is, is really important. The other thoughts that spring to mind, um, I'm not endorsing anything illegal here, but everyone knows through alcohol, for example, substances can alter the mind. And it's fascinating what um, 
yeah, hallucinogenics uh, is coming out with at the moment. And that is another way to become more self-aware. And in particular with the case of psilocybin, which is the active ingredient in ma magic mushrooms and DMT, dimethyltryptamine, which is uh, from either a bark or a toad. Um, th these substances, which actually are present in our, our well, the DMT is present in your, in your spinal fluid, but you can use those, you can micro dose on them through breathing techniques, for example, um, and or taking these yeah. things um, to yeah, give you a different perspective on life and, and suddenly see that you're yeah effectively part of, you know, you're not separate to the universe. Y your ego might think you are, but you're not. You're part of everything else because you're made up of atoms that were birthed in a in a in a star however many billion years ago. We're all made up of you know, energy effectively. So, um, yeah, those those substances <laughs> are an alternative way to uh, become more self-aware, too. <laughs> I think that is um, brilliant. Uh, do you, I can't remember the name of the guy, but who, the bulletproof coffee guy, uh, yes, his Dave name is Dave. Yeah, that's it. Um, Dave Asprey, fantastic book he wrote. Um, game changers. Paul, so game changers. He he has a whole chapter on on the mic dosing and on on these various hallucinogenic drugs. And I think that was it's fascinating to read about, fascinating to hear. And, and he is a guy who has made his entire life mission to not just live to 160 <laughs> madly but also just to optimize every aspect of his life to become a peak performer in every way shape or form and he's gone above and beyond anyone else you could ever imagine in his search for different ways to do this and that game changers book was fantastic for that just to hear all the different things he's explored and it definitely has some interesting stuff on that Absolutely. on yeah. And, and on that one for, for the listeners, Michael Pollan's book, How to Change Your Mind, is also fascinating. His experiment with, with uh, alternative substances, shall we say, uh, and mm. him and how it, it it's it's one of those ones that science are kind of pushing away from but, or have been since the 1960s when they were banned. But now it's really coming back because there's so many healing um, opportunities that are coming from from these things that were previously banned. So it's fascinating to, to learn about. Um, are there any other how uh, ways of, yeah, what, what other ways can, can people uh, increase well, the how ways, would you think? Or one of the things I was going to say as a basis is, I mean, reading. Reading so many books has yeah. opened me to realisations about myself that I could never have had otherwise. And, and I just think, you know, you, we already mentioned Dave Asprey here and, and uh, How to Change Your Mind. Michael Pollan and the other things like uh, the Michael Singer books um, were game changers for me when I read those because Michael Singer talks from a, in a really good way about this kind of um, monkey in your mind as it were the, the part of yourself that's trying to tell you to do things based on your your fear response in theory yes. but he just talks about it in a different way I'd never heard anyone else talk about it and he really opened my mind to to um Kind of what was going on inside uh, and gave me a new perspective on my entire decisions in the world uh so he, he wrote a couple of books um oh, I just, my brain isn't coming up with the names today uh michael singer um, the, the untethered soul and then uh, the surrender experiment uh, which the is surrender his, experiment his, yeah yeah so i i would say the untethered soul is is the one i'm kind of alluding to here because that's really describing his methodology in life and then the surrender experiment like he says is, is autobiography so th that's amazing but then if you want to go down a, a bit more of a scientific route you know you've got things like chimp paradox which i know has been again another game changer for so many people some books where they're talking about this thing this brain this this mind that is not yours that is controlling you the more you can understand it the more you read about it the easier it becomes to do it and to actually you just got to find the thing that makes sense to you Absolutely. and everyone's uh, everyone connects with a different thing which is why reading as many of these books as possible i think that for me that's been it like the more i read about this stuff the yeah. more self-aware i become absolutely yeah stand on the shoulders of giants and read from their amazing books that they've written that you know so much information and knowledge is out there for us to gain and and what with audible now there's you know you don't even have to read it you listen to it and you can it's just incredible so yeah golden golden uh takeaway i think for, for a lot of listeners is that one of the characteristics of really successful happy productive people is that they learn on a regular basis. They're either listening to books or reading books on a regular basis. They're filling their mind with fantastic information that helps them get a different perspective, which helps them raise their self-awareness. And that leads to, to a better, happier life.
effectively so so both intellectually but also physiologically because you know there's thinking which is the brain and there's the feeling which is the language of the body so being more aware of both of those through those methods that we've just mentioned is definitely i think a way forward uh, nice excellent is there anything we haven't covered about self-awareness i mean there's, there's probably tons but i'm conscious of, of time and uh, yeah yeah there's one thing i wanted to say actually um we're, we're gonna get there in the end in our cycle the next two episodes we're going to do around this mindset mastery thing but i just wanted to pinpoint it right now which is this route becoming self-aware even just the first step you don't almost you don't, don't the next two steps are uh kind of uh, overcoming your limiting beliefs so you become self-aware of your self-sabotages so that you can then work out how you can manage and overcome them so that you can then head on to becoming your ideal version of yourself now even without those other two I think that uh, I see it as soon as someone becomes aware of a problem um, or, or a self-sabotage or any one of these things, kind of things we talked about today, I always see an immediate, immediate uh, change in their results, in their life results, in their happiness levels, in their business. They get, they get suddenly start getting investors. They suddenly, a couple of properties just, just pull off. The property deal just pull off. It's, it's insane. I'm like, we have one session where we kind of pinpoint an awareness point where it's like, oh, you, you realize you're kind of doing this and uh, it's it's probably coming from, you know, something you've asked, you should probably look into this. Um, and, and that immediate awareness, a week later, I'm like, oh yeah, just had a, had a deal agreed. Oh, and just an investor just come over the line. Oh, I'm feeling much happier. Like, it doesn't matter what it is. I see results immediately. And that's before they've gone through a process and probably before they've even meditated on it. Just the awareness of it creates results. Um, and I think that's because, I mean, we'll go into this in other other things but there is a definite as soon as you do that there's a change in your emotion in how you feel and therefore an immediate change in the energy you're putting out to the world and therefore everything in the world starts reacting differently to you and that just that alone will create massive results for anyone what do you think Dom? 100 percent uh, agree with you on that one dave because the reason you know i used to be a business advisor i met with over two and a half thousand small businesses and i you know and they got guidance they got um information from people on business models on how to structure deals and everything else like that but when there wasn't results happening well i was really frustrated and that's what really led me to where i am today and where you know working with you is because actually there's i think we're missing almost 80 percent if we're not dealing with the psychological side of business uh, you know, of, of yeah, that self-awareness and um, yeah, that, that ability to kind of shift our emotions and, and our thinking, our perspective. So it's uh, I'm 100% with you. And, and actually, that's why tomorrow I'm going up to Birmingham for the council to deliver some training. But it's on personal development because they yeah they know all sorts of stuff about health and safety and IT and software and all that good stuff. But how aware are they of themselves and how they're holding themselves back? And the answer is. Yeah, who who knows? I'll, I'll find out tomorrow. But the point is, they never get this sort of training. And I think the world is really shifting. I think it's absolutely essential that we learn effectively, as they call them, the softer skills of um, yeah, personal awareness, uh, uh, improvement, uh, personal development, all those good things that allow us to, to grow as people, not just intellectually, because intellectually we're up against AI and that's going to that's you know, that's that's yeah you know, that's another field altogether but anyway oh, okay. let's not go there but the point is you know we have to develop our, our our eq our emotional intelligence and positive intelligence rather than just our iq because uh, knowledge mm. is everywhere now so yeah that's so true i'll just finish on that as well you, you mentioned this kind of 80 percent thing and i just wanted to clarify that from personal experience i think everyone believes when they start this journey that you know 80 percent 90 percent of the success is going to come from technical knowledge and understanding of what they need to do but and the only five ten percent to twenty percent max is going to be to how they do it and what i've seen is it's utterly the opposite you have people who are just so knowledgeable know everything they, they can do everything receiving achieving no results and you have people who really don't really know what they're doing very well at all and they're kind of fumbling through and doing it okay achieving incredible results and and the truth is the self-awareness piece this is what we talked about today is 90 95 percent of your success comes from that and the, the technical piece is, yeah, you, you need it to kind of make sure you don't mess up too bad or you can kind of get through some obstacles a bit easier. But truthfully, I see it time and time again. The results come from this piece, not from the knowledge. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed listening to that one as much as those guys enjoyed recording it. And if you are enjoying the show too, so far, but just a week is too long between episodes, then there is a solution. Uh, you can get our weekly insights sent direct to your inbox once a week. Um, you can go and subscribe on our website, property-strategy.com forward slash insights. And we'll just send a weekly kind of bulletin or a thought piece to your inbox. Again, along these lines of growing and scaling a property company. I promise you, no fluff, no spam, just great content to keep you focused and on track. Uh, the link is in the show notes if you want to come on over and subscribe to that. No, next week. This time next week, we will be talking about business transformation and why business transformation and personal transformation really do go hand in hand and how learning to let go of those deep-seated fears, worries and anxieties is directly correlated to your ability to grow and scale up your property business. So it's going to be Dave and I, uh, Jackie, hijacking the planned agenda for that session to talk about how there's an easier way to grow your business and um, if you can look at changing your perspective in terms of the things that you're focusing on. Until then.